from the blimp as it is on the ground. Josh Broadway. He plays cross-handed. Cross-handed. Bob Murphy. You could take a nap while he pauses at the top of his backswing. Miller Barber. A lot of guys said that they'd rather face a uh, dentist than face Miller Barber's swing. Gary Player. Player on the tee. You know your swing's unique when Peter Jacobson does an impression of it. <laughs> Lee Trevino. The Merry Max didn't escape Jacobson's wrath either. Those swings didn't make the final cut. Here's who. Watch this swing. I think it's tremendous. Acrobatic almost. You have to play with Eamon Darcy to appreciate Eamon Darcy, the Irishman. It's a terrible swing, isn't it? It's unusual. And it's one in thousands. <laughs> We used to call him Chicken Wing because his right elbow sort of floated. It looked like it was broken on the way back. It looked like jingling a, a handful of keys, but they were jingled with a beautiful rhythm. Keys never ever stayed together. Look at Ernie Els at the top of the backswing. A classic position. Now, let's have a look at Mr. Eamon Darcy. Now, this is a classic in its own right. Look at the right elbow, parallel to the ground, left forearm perpendicular to the ground and how he gets there i have no idea <laughs> that's right <laughs> chicks dig the long ball i don't think he takes it back far enough he needs to be a little more flexible if he had two hands on the club head as far back as he takes the club could actually untie his shoes oh hello the unmistakable swing of Nancy Lopez. As great a mom as Nancy Lopez is, she could probably make lunch for her kids to take to school in the time that she takes a backswing, make a couple sandwiches. It wasn't even more so her, her backswing being slow. I think it was her initial takeaway, the way she rose her hands up and then set her hands very quickly. Nancy's yes was very unusual. It doesn't take a trained eye to notice that her swing is definitely different than uh, than most. It's not a swing you would teach somebody, that sort of daisy, that loop-de-doo, dip, dipsy-doodle thing she's got going on there. You know, that's not what Ledbetter's teaching. Natalie uh, works with Butch Harmon, and Butch told me an interesting story about her, that she actually has an extra vertebra. So a lot of her head movement is actually due to this. Maybe it's that extra vertebra that she has in her back, though, that... that... Mo Norman was quite possibly the straightest hitter in professional golf. He was machine-like to watch. <laughs> I love that guy. So saw Mo uh, hitting golf balls when he was about 70, and you could put a blanket out there and he'd hit four irons, and every one of them would land on the blanket. I, I would stand in, in amazement. Mo's motion was very simple, very little hands in his swing, a, a very a much a, a body tight swing where the hands were very very passive in fact uh, they actually started a, a, a golf methodology after his swing which was called natural golf yeah. and uh, uh, how natural it is uh, that's debatable oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm in a different world I'm in the world of the unknown I'm the only guy who's got the feeling of greatness I always called him the master. You know, he, he was the guy that had the secrets. Now, he might not be able to tell you what they were. Just put this dumb guy on that dumb guy. Into that dumb guy, into that dumb guy. Nobody knows how to hit a golf ball. Nobody. Only the guy you're looking at. Every day, same thing every day. MOS, more of the same. The intonation of the end of the sentence, end of your sentence, ended like this. Like I something everybody wants. That's how he talked. And you look, look. Take the ball. Look at the face. Hit it down the middle. I'll hit that ball straight and pure every time. Just put it here. Every time. Take your hands. Just take it back. Hit it every time. Look. Do it every time. <laughs> Do it every time. <laughs> Who's next to scheme so easy? Oh, yeah, let me out of here. Raymond. Funky. Kooky looking swing. I mean, you know, wristy. 
just goes to show you, it doesn't matter how you take it back. It's how you, you how you make impact on the golf ball. <laughs> it's got the alligator arms, you know. When I imitate Raymond swing, I take it back inside and then lift it a little in the back swing. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Raymond Floyd! <laughs> It is one of the most unorthodox swings I think anyone has ever seen. It's almost a famous move at this point. I think Faraday said it looked like an octopus falling out of a tree. It's almost weirder when you see it in person, up close. So you see it on TV and you're kind of like, oh, that's not so bad. But, boy, you stand 10 feet behind him on the practice range, it's still pretty strange. I don't think my fundamentals are any different than from... Uh, uh, another guy that has a classic golf swing, but uh, you know, I, I think you should be allowed to have your own flair, your own style, or, or whatever's natural for you. I have a goofy grip. I have a double overlap. You know, most most guys will overlap with one finger or interlock. And the double overlap really for me is is helped me become much more solid in transition. Thorpe, my gosh, I mean, uh, I watch Thorpe swing and I just say, ouch. It hurts my wrist to watch him, the way he hits down on the ball. There's stuff flying all over the place. Uh, how his elbow stays attached to his forearm, which stays attached to his shoulder, I have no clue. Homegrown, you know what, it's my swing, you know what I mean? I heard Johnny Miller say one time that... Uh, my swing had more moves than Kung Fu. Jim Thorpe is built like Jim Brown. The swing is almost violent, but it's still artistic because it's so original. It's not exactly Sam Snead, but it's Jim Thorpe. You know, I got a swing on a mother could love. You know, my swing is ugly. I mean, it works. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I beat a lot of guys with an ugly swing. I can't say enough about Jim Thorpe's swing. I've seen it now for 30 years and it hasn't changed one bit. Few people realize that Jim Thorpe's helicopter swing is an anti-hook swing. That was his bugaboo back in the day. So with uh, a lot of work, he developed that very funny looking swing, but it's very effective. It's the grittiest, grindingest, that's a word, grindingest move belonging to a great player. He swung so hard at it, and his head would bob as he watched the ball fly, and the crowd reacting to him was just phenomenal. And we're all sitting back looking at Arnold going, this is our hero. This is the guy, because of the way he could actually mash a ball. I think he drilled a hole in the wind there. His trajectory wasn't just up and, and carry. It was, phew, get after it. I mean, just get after it. No videotapes. We're not working on mechanics. We are moving this white golf ball 260 down there, one way or another, come hell or high water. Peter's a good friend, and and, uh, and he liked to kid me, and that was his way of doing it. If you're a little squeamish, you might want to turn away. Charles Barkley swing. Well. It's not a swing. Hide the women and children. Oh, it's a borderline criminal act. Oh, 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 did he kill anybody? Wow, that's all I can say. Sorry! How could you best describe it? It looks a little bit like an epileptic seizure. Wow, wow, that's wow. right. Wow. I think that was a triple pump. 
<laughs> yeah, it's faking, man. There's nobody there. You don't have to shoot. There's nobody there. Just shoot it. Shoot the ball. We got the guy up. <laughs> you know, normally when he stops it, Roger, it's about halfway down. This one really got pretty deep down. Yeah, about I mean, halfway it, back. Yeah, I mean, there, wow. <laughs> wow. You said on Jay Leno that I was the worst golfer.